you called me on the on the phone the other day. You told me a great story that I think is uh, is good for all our listeners, our subscribers. Um, Frankie Burke story. Um, crazy story. I remember when you told it to me on the phone, I was just like, holy shit. I kind of actually pulled over, stopped my car and, and just listened. Um, but for the viewers, I mean, tell us a little bit about that story because uh, I don't know if a lot of people know it from, from your angle. Uh, Frankie Burke, for the people who don't know, his father was Jimmy Burke from the, the movie Goodfellas. And uh, me and Frankie didn't know each other. Obviously, I knew of his father and our neighborhood, everybody knew of his father. His father just went to prison. And uh, at the time, I just got stabbed up. So I was walking with a cane that was in a neighborhood bar called CBS. And Frankie was in there and he was talking to a girl, Barbara, that I knew. And we got into a little confrontation at the bar and Barbara tried to step in between us. And Frankie said, well, I'll be right back. And Barbara said, you know, he's going to go out to the car and get a gun. So I said, yeah, that's all right. I already got a gun. And he went out to his car and I think he had a Corvette at the time. And uh, people got in between us, and it ended at that. And that was the end of our argument, but we figured we had something. You know, he knew who I was now, and I knew who he was. And I went into a diner uh, a week later or two weeks later, and he was in the diner sitting, and a guy waves at me. He was a good friend of mine. And Frankie's sitting next to him, and he smiles, and he waves. So I look at him, and I'm like, what is he doing with my friend? You know, so I said, I wonder if my friend knows that we had the answer. So I walk over. And we both just laugh, smile, sit down. We start talking. We joke about it. And uh, he says, you know, I came close to shooting you. I says, actually, I came pretty close to shooting you, too. So we joked about it, and we got really friendly. And uh, the, the guys that I stayed with, the Gambino family guys, the Gattis, and them, they really didn't like him. And I really didn't care because we got very friendly. And uh, I like Frankie. So uh, as the years went on, uh, we did some things together. We had two bodies together, meaning two killings together. And we uh, dealt drugs together. We fought together. We went on boats together. And we laughed a lot together. And that's, you know, that when he gets, when he later on, he gets killed. And uh, I was devastated. They rang my bell at four in the morning to tell me that uh, he was shot five or six times by another guy that stays with us. So I had to go tell the family. I had to go ring the bell and tell the mother, Mickey, and the sisters, uh, Kathy and Robin. And at the time, the little brother was very young. He was a baby, Jesse. So, I mean, it was one of the uh, worst things I had to tell somebody's family. And and really, I was, you know, we were, and the mother used to talk about me a lot because I reminded her of, of Frankie. So uh, I was close with them even when I was on parole and I snuck around the back of the house to make sure I could show up to the family's house after the, you know, after the, uh, funeral and things like that. But uh, it's one of those things when people ask you about what's the one of the worst things that ever happened in your life that was something that really affected you in that life. And it had to be Greg Ryder, and, uh, who was also killed and never found, and Frankie Burke. And uh, I just it's just part of that life. You know, you're, you're loyal to somebody, even though everybody else was against them at that time because his father just got taken down and the new leadership was actually the Gambino family was really running that neighborhood. Before that, the Lucchese family was very strong. So it was a, a sad time, really, in, in my life. Now, how do you, I mean, I think it's interesting that you guys were both, you know, ready to kill each other and then become good friends. How do you trust someone after you tell him I was going to kill you, he tells you I was going to kill you? I mean, do you ever fully trust them or do you always have to have your guard up a little? Uh, with Frankie, I, tr I truly trusted him after that. And I think because we had a very good mutual friend. And uh, both of us laughed about it. And we moved on. And he was just one of those guys. Man, he was a funny guy. We had some laughs. He used to come running in my house. He came in one time at 3 or 4 in the morning, whatever time it was, with a fireman's hat. He stole from somewhere. And he set off the fire alarm. And I had a two, an old couple who lived in the middle of the floor. And they were running out of the building. He's yelling for people next door. And I go, Frankie, what are you doing? And he always used to call me kiddo, 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 kiddo. And uh, just... Listen, he had a great sense of humor. Good-looking guy. Had a lot of girls. He was running all over the place. It was a shame what happened to him. And that's the the message back again to the kids. You know, that, that family suffered a lot through him, him dying, his dad in jail, him dying in jail of cancer. And that's the reality of this life. And, uh, and, the, and the bad thing is one time you're on top, and then the next day when his father's gone, everybody's really doesn't want anything to do with him. And, you know, that wasn't the case with me and him. I still stayed with him. I hung out with him, 
snuck around with him, whatever word you want to do around my family, not seeing him, meaning again, being a family. And for you, Gene, are there any uh, instances for yourself that there were people uh, that you almost killed or almost killed you and then you became good friends with after? Of course, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you have any uh, particular favorite um, people? I, I, want to, I just wanted to ask Johnny, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Vinny was in on the um, the Tino hit, right? The Tito hit? Doesn't he the getaway driver, the one they retaliated for? Um, for uh, they me, I heard different rumors. I'm not really right? sure. T Tito was uh, from, you know, there was two guys actually. It was Tito from the Black Gate and it was Tito from Father and Sons. Wow. Tito from Father and Sons, his brother-in-law was Dominic Cataldi, who was a banana guy, and with Vinny Asara, his uh, boss, his old boss. And Vinny Asara was a banana family, but very close and loyal That's to true. Jimmy Burke, who was mm -hmm. a Lucchese family. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the interactions of families, this is exactly what goes on. So um, it was uh, really something that, like I said, that uh, you're not going to forget. But, you know, the, the, the kids got to see this. This is what I'm talking about. You know, the, the treachery of the life, how people don't give a shit about the next guy. He's old news. The new guy comes. No, you lose your life. No one cares. And, uh, you know, the, the Burke family, I always liked them. I mean, I, I really cared about the mother. I mean, I felt bad for what happened. And the sisters were always really cool. I mean, I, who knows what they think now after all this goes on. But uh, I was loyal to that brother. So, And how do you tell, uh, you know, I mean, talk about that, that moment of telling when you have to tell a family that, you know, Frankie's dead. I mean, what's going on in your head? Is it, does it ever, uh, you know, maybe scare you that one day someone would have to tell your family about you? I mean, what goes on in your head when you have to do that? You know, what's the thing is you, you, you don't think about that part, right? You accept the part that you might get killed. When they rang my bell at night, I lived on uh, Ozone Park, uh, down the block from his uncle Ruggiano's. And the Cucarelli brothers came by my house. They were at the gate when it happened. And I said, you sure? Are you sure? And they were like, they, you know, they were so scared. And we got in the car and I said, let's go back there. I got to make sure. And uh, they were telling me the story on the way there. And it was all lined, you know, it was all roped off. There was a million cops around. And when I went there, uh, obviously he, he was gone. And I had to go to that house and, and the ride down, because I had to make sure he was dead first. The ride down, I just kept thinking, what do I say when I ring this bell? And uh, I didn't think I had to say much. Kathy came to the door and she seen my face and eyes and I just shook my head. And then she's like, what? And I, you know, I just blurted it out fast instead of prolonging it. And then we both got in the car. We had to go to Kings County Hospital so she can identify the body. And uh, it was probably the worst thing I think I ever did is, is you know, just one the day before we're laughing, joking, and then you're just gone. Like, and really on a stupid thing because we were all, hung out together. Actually, the guy, that Tito, that kills him, they think it's another Tito that runs an after hours, uh, a Spanish guy that ran an after hours in East New York and Brooklyn that we all used to hang out at. So they actually lock up the wrong guy. And they kind of look the same, the same size, same weight, everything. And then the retaliation comes and that Tito gets hit and father and sons. Uh, I think he got shot about 10 times in the head, double what Frankie got. So, uh, but it doesn't bring Frankie back. And, that, and that's the, the bottom line. Did you have to do that for, like, telling families for multiple people? Um, do you remember other instances that you had to do that for? Uh, when Greg Ryder dies, uh, I didn't have to tell the family, uh, but we knew he had a problem, and he disappeared. And the mom called me up, and I tried to find out exactly what was going on, which I already had an idea. And, you know, I went after certain guys. I heard a couple of guys. I was trying to get information. And then I was told to stay away from it by the Gambino family, which I knew then it was probably either sanctioned or they knew about it, either one that was okayed uh, through them or if they had possibly some involvement. And uh, so I went to the mother after that. I mean, that's the worst thing to sit with somebody's mom and they, they're trying to have hope that maybe he's not dead. In their mind, they know he's dead and you never get any of that closure. And Greg was like Frankie. These guys were fun guys to hang out with, good looking, good shape. Uh, we went out all the time, had good times on boats and cars. And, you know, we were, you know, you're living life in a fast lane and it ends just as abruptly. So uh, that's part of this, what I'm trying to talk to kids about. You know, obviously they don't see this part and they don't see how fast people forget about him. I mean, he's just gone. That's it. Whether you're a guy that died, whether you're a guy that went to jail, whether you're a guy that walked away from the life, somebody who cooperated, you're just gone. Nobody cares about you. Mm. It's over. Do you think it's mostly, sorry, do you think it's mostly people in 
this life that, you know, once they die, you're forgotten about more than, you know, regular people? I mean, nah, I mean, I use, you know, everybody knows I like Mike Tyson. I talk about Tyson a lot. When he was a champ, everybody loved him. They followed around when he had problems with his ex-wife, who, in my opinion, obviously, I didn't like what she did to him. But, uh, you know, people are following you when you're on top. As soon as you're on, you know, you're, you're down and out, they're not following you. He's back again and he's he's doing shows and he's he's actually a good comedian. Know, he's funny. He's, he's a funny guy and he's, uh, he's fooling around with the mitts again and he looks good. And, you know, people love him again, right? So... It's just human nature, I think, when you fall off the throne, they forget about you, and you get all these wannabe followers when you're doing good. And then when you're doing bad, everybody's knocking you. Right. So, And you can't be on the throne forever. Just That's not just not realistic. But the realistic thing is that your real true friends are going to be around with you no matter what. And for you, Gene, do you feel like that happened to you too, even when you, when you went away that people, you know, kind of forget about you or they just kind of throw you under the bus and, and don't care? I mean, have you noticed oh that when you God. got... When you got it's out. like this, when you're in the street, you know, you're the guy, you're this, that, you know, everybody loves you. As soon as you're gone, you're facing life. It's no more, nothing. He's a mud. He's no, he was never this. He was never that. Then, you know, the fake stories start coming out. That's what they do. You know what I mean? That's just, uh, it's the same thing with everything, you know? Is it, is, is it hard for you now to, to come back? Do you want to like almost uh, show people that, you know, what you were saying, I, I heard what you were saying when I was in jail, like, that's not true. Or do you feel like you have to like avenge or get revenge in any way or no? No. Nah. No, not at all. It's just like, you know, people are going to try to make you look bad because, you know, they want to they want to knock me down. You know what I mean? They're mad that I'm out. I'm doing good for myself. So that kills them even more, mm. you know? So they're going to come with, you know, the fake stories and the bull crap. They see us. They were doing good. We live good. And it kills them. That, so that's that's how, that's really what it is. And and for you, John, the my other question was when you had, you know, your friends getting shot and you're talking about you're living life in the fast lane. When next day, boom, dead. Did that ever dissuade you or, or scare you or tell yourself at any point, you know, maybe I should get out before uh, before that happens to me? No, because, you know, Frankie dies, Greg dies, Angel Costelli dies, Joey Danka dies, uh, Kevin Pittman dies. I could go through the names. And I said, mm -hmm. these are all my friends. So and I stayed in the life. Uh, so, you know, that's life of, of this life, which is terrible. That's the, the bottom line. It's a bad life.